So it's time to interact uh, for real with the Kubernetes cluster. And some of you might think, well, it's about time. Like we've been almost like two hours at, at this and we still haven't really run actual kubectl commands. So but kubectl, um, it's the only tool that we need for basic interaction with a Kubernetes cluster. And it's a CLI tool. So it's a kind of uh, glorified version of curl, but especially for Kubernetes, if you will. Each time we do a kubectl command, it's basically crafting um, uh, an API request, sending that request to the Kubernetes API server, getting the result and showing the result. And so everything goes over this API. If you've used Docker before, it's the same philosophy. It's like when, when we use a Docker CLI, we do Docker this, Docker that. Each time it's like API request going to the Docker engine and passing the result. kubectl is exactly the same thing, but for the kube API. Um, how does kubectl know where uh, is the API server? Well, it knows thanks to a small configuration file, which uh, on our machines, um, let me reconnect to my cluster here. Um, so that config file is in a cube slash config. And in that configuration file, I have some certificate information. So, okay, a bunch of things. And here, that's uh, the, uh, the address um, of the API endpoint. This is basically telling to kubectl, if you want to connect to the API server, this, this is it. That's, that's where you need to connect. This kube config file has not only like the uh, API server address, but also the credentials. So key and certificate to be used to communicate with the API server. This means that if I wanted, I could get that config file, copy that to another machine, and then use kubectl and communicate with, with my cluster and it would work just fine. Um, I can, uh, I can specify a different config file if I need to. I can also have multiple cluster uh, information in the, in the config file. We will see that this afternoon. Uh, and finally, last but not least, uh, I'm personally saying kubectl because, um, that's, that's, that's how I, that's what I'm used to, but you might see in like other presentations or packs or etc. Uh, have cube control or cube cuddle or cube cuddle or cubic or that's all the same thing. It's just that in English it it's kind of makes sense to say like cube cuddle or etc. In French, when there is an abbreviation, we generally spell out all the letters one by one. So I just it's ingrained in my brain that I. I say kubectl, um, but you might hear that pronounced differently in other sources. All right, first commands with kubectl. Uh, the first command that we will see is kubectl get, and it's used to list all the resources of a specific type. So for instance, if I do kubectl get nodes, that means list all the nodes. And that gives me the list of my four nodes. I can also put like kubectl get node, singular, and it works the same way. Um, so the reason why it accepts both like plural and singular is because sometimes you want to see just like one specific object and then you can put its name. So I can do kubectl get node, node one. And in that case, it shows just node one. So it's just like a little bit more intuitive when you read a script, like, okay, get nodes that gets all the nodes. Get node node one, it gets just the node node one. Fine. Uh, since um, many of us, at least me in particular, are uh, lazy people, there is also a shorthand version, um, kubectl get no, which works exactly the same way. And you will see that for most common resource types, there will be an abbreviated version, like deployment becomes deploy, services becomes SVC, etc., etc. Which means that if I had a node called satisfaction, I could actually have a perfectly legit command that would be kubectl get no satisfaction. I don't have a node with that name, but if I had, then I yeah, get the idea. 